The scales were born. Each was given a gift from their mother, each a gift essential against what she had grown to fear most. Malice. We've briefly touched on Malice previously, but now we're going to dive into what it's really about, so I'm going to take it from the top. Malice in this story not only exists as a desire, but also that desire manifests as a sort of energy within a person, a crystallization of negative emotions. If a person holds hate inside their heart, that maliciousness has the potential to form a kind of seed within them if left unchecked. But simply having a seed isn't the point of no return. Fionn can see a couple of kids in Maggie's classroom that have them, but doesn't treat it as a big deal. Uh, Fionn is a Gazen who are the children of the scale blind gaze. Their gift is the ability to see malice in all its forms. No, the point of no return is if that seed blooms. If this happens, the person holding the malice is transformed into a mindless creature driven by their hatred called a malevolent. Now, we haven't seen one of these, yet, but what we have seen are some of the lesser effects of an active seed, one of which are beings made purely of the malice built up in a person called spites. These are the creatures we fight in the cursed book. Speaking of which, the owner of that book is potentially very interesting when it comes to the topic of malice, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's talk about what malice actually looks like first. In a previous video, I said this shot of Belle showed her overflowing with malice without much of an explanation. So now we're going to have a look at all the places this strange aura and goop show up. First of all, going over this instance again, before this scene, we actually have a very impactful shot of Belle in another scene where Chimers just died in front of her. Of course, he didn't actually die, he just flew off a bit further than he usually does. And you'll notice that this shot uses the same colour palette as that which malice manifests in, or at least that's what I'm claiming. If you're not convinced yet, we'll get there, hopefully. She is boiling with hatred at this point, all of it directed at those two Graven. Following that with this first shot I showed, which happens a little later, now we see Belle's malice on full display. It drips off of her as the burning aura flares all around her. Very similar to Ursula. During her fight, she becomes more and more smothered by her own rage, and we see what looks like it could be the beginnings of a spite forming. Spites have this thorny, rosy aesthetic to them, which I'm sure has no connection at all to the Ardell roses you're tasked with collecting throughout the game. <laughs> Say the line! Ludon. We'll talk about that in another video. Yay! Anyway, an interesting note I want to make before we move on is, despite all the things Bonnie does throughout the game, we never see her display these colours. That goes to show that she really was doing all of her kidnapping shenanigans to try and help Belle in her own weird way. Even when facing off against people she knows have hurt Belle, she comes at them with the same brash confidence she always shows, rather than malicious intent. Not to say that she doesn't care strongly enough about Belle, of course she does, but fighting is just fun for her. Plus, she definitely has a soft side, and I think those are the reasons why she doesn't seem to be expelling any malice of her own. And I don't know, I just thought it was a cool detail that even if you know about malice, you might not catch it until you play the main story through a second time. But there is yet another example of malice within this world, and it's probably the most worrying by far. Malice can manifest not only as spites, but also as curses put upon the person or people the hatred is directed at, which is exactly what happened to Vivian when she played a prank on Lawbright, another one of the scales. We don't know what the prank is at this point, maybe she just put a really, really big bucket of water over a bedroom door or something. But the curse in this case was de-aging her to be a child again, which for Aloran means she can no longer cast magic. Now, what kind of maniac would even try to prank a scale is a worrying question for another time, but the more pressing worrying question is, what happens if a scale becomes overtaken by her malice and transforms into a malevolent? In the book about malice in the town library, it says that a malevolent can rival even the scales in power, clearly meaning a malevolent that used to be, you know, a normal person. But then what if that person was a scale to begin with, and they became a malevolent? Would they be even more powerful? Even more so than, say, Armadale? Because this is what we see when we encounter Lawbright ourselves in the post-game. There are even malice looking hazards in the later levels of the curse book, almost like she's trying to use the book to contain her malice. She is swimming in this stuff. But how and why would a scale have a seed to begin with? Well, I can think of one reason. The War of the Scales is something we've now heard of from two perspectives, because back in Prodigal, Colorgrave will tell Oren about a bunch of squabbling siblings who eventually all turn on one to put the blame onto, causing her and her children to be unfairly cast out. And the second perspective, of course, is in the very beginning of Curse Crackers, this time telling of a tranquil family turned to ruin thanks to one unruly outlier, who was justly banished in order to restore the peace. But whose perspective is this, exactly? It's easy to assume that this is simply the narrative now told to the children of this world and that we're basically reading a storybook, which we surely are because, well, we're eventually trapped inside of it. History is written by the victors, and it's clear that this time, Lawbright was victorious. But I get the feeling this wasn't the result she was after, or at least it wasn't her ultimate goal, otherwise why is she still so, you know, malice -y? 
I think what she really wants is to be the only remaining scale. Or, here's a thought, what if she's trying to become a Malevolent on purpose in order to be able to overthrow Armadale herself? I definitely think we haven't seen the last of Lawbright or her malice. And yeah, I think that's about it for this video. Oh, hi Mr. Elephant, I didn't see you there. Uh, what do you have to say about all this then? Let's just uh, take a quick look here and- uh, Oh right, Belle's malice. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Belle's entire house is apparently seeped in malice, according to Fionn, to the point where she's shocked that Belle's seed hasn't bloomed yet. Almost as though there's something negating its effects. Now, I was going to pull the classic, we'll talk about that next time, but I don't want to split this one thing into multiple videos, and you've been so well behaved, so let's talk about Magic Eaters. Not long after the scales were gone from this world, strange creatures were noticed lurking in the ruinous battlefields left by the Scale War. Beings with life that by all means shouldn't have it. Radis the Demon claimed that they were Magic Eaters who would bring further ruin to Ladamra and disrupt her plans of leading this world into a new age of magic. She and her followers hunted these creatures into extinction. Little more is known of these beings as they were destroyed before they could be observed further, but by all accounts, they seemed harmless. Beings with life that by all means shouldn't have it. Does that sound at all… familiar? Of course it does. It's Chime, the living bell that has a big appetite and once ate a meteor. I think that Chime is definitely one of these magic eaters that survived the genocide and now feeds off of Belle's malice. Hence why her seed has miraculously not bloomed despite the immense amount of malice she's accumulated around her over the years. However, I do still think that Belle's malice is going to come into play at some point in the future, either due to Chime's absence or death, or maybe she'll simply create too much at once for him to eat. I mean, as I said in a previous video, it seems like most of her malice is being generated without her knowledge, so if something were to happen to tip the scales a little too far, who knows what could happen. But that's going to do it on the topic of malice for real this time. I am of course going to make a video dedicated solely to magic eaters sometime soon, but for now, we must wait to see what malicious things Colorgrave has in store for us. Uh, by which I mean Colorgrave the developers, not Colorgrave the character. Although, I could it could mean both, I suppose. Anyway, it doesn't, doesn't matter. Goodbye.